I wondered what would happen if I tried to automate a 555 timer IC, so I came up with a little design, ordered some PCBs, and started experimenting. Today's project is sponsored by PCB Wave, where you can get 10 PCBs for $5 plus shipping, and they also have a lot of resource information on the site, so you can learn about all the technologies available and maybe get inspired for some unique projects. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Let's take a look at the design concept, put a board together, and try it out. I'm planning to use a 555 to generate audio tones, but it could also be used for a clock generator. So first let's take a look at the general 555 configurations. Looking at the Renaissance datasheet, they show a couple of configurations for a stable operation, and I'm going to use this configuration for one of my circuits. And then there's the monostable, which generates an output pulse when the IC receives a trigger input. So if we have a fixed capacitor, we can use a variable resistor and change the frequency of the output pulses. And in this case, I'm using an X9C family digital potentiometer which means I can control the resistance, therefore the frequency of this oscillator, electrically. I'm using the 100K version of the pot, and it basically looks like this. There's a chip select pin to enable the controls, and then you just choose whether you want the wiper to go up or down, and then you increment the wiper in that direction every time you give a low pulse. So if I connect those control signals to a PCF8574 GPIO expander, I can control the digital potentiometer and the frequency of the 555 from something else like an Arduino over I2C. The PCF8574 has an I2C interface and provides 8 GPIO. Now we have an audio oscillator we can control the frequency of over I2C, and that frequency comes out right here. But then I have two D flip-flops, and those are connected to provide clock division from the main clock. If we connect up D flip-flops like this, this is a 555 tone at a certain frequency. I'm also going to have another tone one octave lower, and another tone an octave lower than the previous. So that allows some interesting sounds. Now I have these three audio tones, each separated by an octave and I'm channeling them all to an audio mixer through this 4066 quad bilateral switch, so I can individually turn on or disconnect each audio path and mix them together. The 4066 basically looks like this, and you have four single-pole, single-throw switches inside, each with a logic control input, so when the control is high, the switch contacts are closed. When it's low, the contacts are open. And those controls for those switches can also be controlled over I2C. Finally, after this audio mixer, there's another digital pot being used as an audio output level control, again controlled over I2C. So I can control the frequency and the volume of this entire system from an Arduino off board. Here's what the schematic looks like. I actually have two of those 555 circuits, the audio mixer, the PCF8574 for control, and miscellaneous components. Looking at the first 555, there's provisions on the board so that I can either connect it up to a digital pot, or if I take that out of its socket, I can connect a real potentiometer as well. So the idea is to use pin headers, and then I can just plug DuPont wires in and temporarily connect a pot or go digital. The output of this oscillator has a jumper, so I can pull that off and separate this if I want, and maybe connect a DuPont wire here, go off board or go somewhere else. I always like to have flexibility. And here on the control voltage pin, there's also another jumper, and this goes to another digital pot. And that can allow me to frequency modulate the 555 oscillator for even more interesting audio effects. The main oscillator output comes down here to the 7474 flip-flops, and that forms my clock divider. So I have a 555 output 1A, the main frequency, and then 1B and 1C are each half of the previous frequency. The reason I chose 74HC74 
is because I already have these in stock thanks to the big pile of parts that Drex sent me last year. So I'm designing with what I have in stock. Now that I have those three different 555 frequencies, this is the 4066 switch IC. So when this control is high, the input signal will be connected here to the output, and those switched tone generators will come here to the input of a mixer circuit. And here are the two digital potentiometers connecting up to the main oscillator frequency as well as the control voltage pin. Then I have a different configuration of the 555, and this one uses more 4066 switches to allow me to configure this back and forth between A-stable and monostable based on the differences in the configurations. For example, in A-stable mode, there's a resistor connected between pins 7 and 6. Monostable, it's just a short circuit between those pins. So here, between pins 7 and 6, I have an onboard resistor connected, but if I set this configuration control high, I'm shorting out that resistor, which basically connects pin 7 directly to 6. So by doing this, I can change it from A-stable to monostable. And my main second oscillator output comes down to a clock divider. I end up with three different tones out of this that can be switched on and off. Those come over to the audio mixer as well, and the digital pots are right here. Over on the mixer, the whole board runs on 5 volts, and since it's a single supply, we have a bias voltage of 2.5 volts from this divider, so the audio signals can swing above and below 2.5 volts without clipping. Because we're trying to mix up to six different signals, that are all coming from digital logic that can be toward the 5 volt rail, we can't sum these all together unless we reduce the gain. So most of these channels have a gain of 1 tenth, but a couple of them, which happen to be the main 555 oscillator outputs, have a little more gain because the output of the 555 is lower than the output of these D flip-flops. So by changing the gain on certain channels, we can normalize the levels across all the audio pads. And here we have the option of putting in a digital pot to control the volume on the output. And this is not designed to drive a speaker directly, so this is meant to go into a power amplifier on some other board. The GPIO expanders take serial clock and data. We have pull-up resistors for that bus. And each of these chips can be configured for a given address with onboard jumpers. Another feature I wanted was an LED for each of those mixer channels. So just at a glance, I can see which audio pads are turned on based on which LEDs are on. And I made a mistake on the actual circuit design. This here is the corrected version. What I've had to do to get this working is provide these six LEDs off board. So I used one of the little 1206 to through hole adapter PCBs that one circuit recently sent me, and it worked out well. Coming back to the fact that I have two of these 555s and one of them is more configurable, over on Jameco there's a blog post by Forrest Mims who created this stepped tone generator out of a couple of 555s back in the 80s. And this evolved into being referred to as the Atari Punk console sound generator later. There's an oscillator driving a monostable circuit. So the first oscillator controls the frequency, and the second one has an adjustable output pulse duration, which we can see on the scope as a PWM, and it creates some interesting sounds. Wikipedia has an Atari Punk console article, so this chooses a main frequency, and this adds some interesting effects to it. So let's get this up and running, starting with physical pots instead of digital pots for the main oscillator frequencies here. Over on GitHub, I have one little test sketch. Straightforward configurations here for the GPIO expander. I named all the GPIO expander signals here based on what they are controlling. On this sketch, I have four push button inputs. This sketch allows the board to run in two different modes. I can just use this as a simple oscillator where I can turn on up to three audio channels at once, or with the other switch, I can put it in that stepped tone generator mode and try that out. So I talk to the GPIO expanders and set up all those controls the way I want to get started. Then I set all the digital potentiometers the way I want. In the main loop, 
If a certain switch has been pressed, go into that stepped tone generator mode, and I turn on the output of the second 555, because that's where the main tone generator output now is. And when I call this function to configure the 555s for stepped tone generator, this is where I configure those 4066 switches to make sure this 555 is connected up monostable, and this first 555 output is connected over here to trigger the monostable. And going through the loop, if we're not in stepped tone mode, we just check for the buttons and whichever path is active, we turn on any combination of these main 555 audio signals and get those tones out. In the other sketch, this one is more about making sound effects. So we have the same setup, and this time we're using the onboard digital pots for everything. And in the loop, I just call separate functions to generate a bunch of different tones or sound effects, and wait half a second between each one, so it loops through the whole thing over and over. And we're just going to look at one example here. This is just a bunch of little random chirps. I'm printing out messages in the serial monitor to keep track of where I am throughout this whole process. So the way to control the oscillators for different sounds, here I have a loop for 20 cycles. I turn on the mixer input for the main 555 oscillator, wait a short while, so now I'm hearing a certain little beep. Then on the other 555, I'm moving the frequency control pot to a random position so it will create a random frequency. Then I turn on the second 555 oscillator, wait a little bit. Now I turn off the first one, switch to another random frequency on that first oscillator. So I'm using both 555s overlapping to create different frequency little beats. And quickly for this second one, it's just a little melody playing. So the same sort of thing, we move the pot to a certain frequency, turn on or off certain audio channels, and to make a sliding pitch tone, there's a little loop here, and we move the pot wiper in a certain direction, one step at a time, do a little pause, and then we're basically slowly or quickly turning a potentiometer up or down, and it will slide the pitch. And we can use these two oscillators to either make sort of music or just noise. Let's let it run through the whole cycle and see what we got. When I combine this with other audio projects or even other methods of control, even if I use this to trigger some other circuits, or I put some other effects like delay, reverb, things can start to get interesting and maybe we're going to do a DIY synth project eventually. But for now, still coming up with all these building blocks and getting new ideas all the time. Thanks to PCBWay for helping make this possible by sponsoring this project. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. I'll see you on the next video.